What's the most impressively accurate prediction that has been made in history? John Adams, upon signing the Declaration of Independence, said that not abolishing slavery would lead to a war that would divide the United States in half in less than a hundred years, 85 years later. Don't leave us on a cliffhanger like that. If there is ever another war in Europe, it will come out of some damn silly thing in the Balkans. Otto van Bismarck, 1878. Not so much a prediction as a crazy coincidence. Edgar Allan Poe, in 1838, wrote a story called The Narrative of Gordon Pym of Nantucket. Four survivors of a shipwreck draw straws to determine who will be cannibalized so the others may survive. Richard Parker succumbs to consumption, not Oregon Trail style. Same scenario occurs in real life in 1884. A yacht called the Minionette sinks. Four survivors end up on a barren raft. They realize they cannot all survive. Someone is going to get Donna partied up in there. Ends up being the poor cabin boy. His name? Richard Parker. There's a court case on the real life scenario. Can't remember the name. Mark Twain predicting he would die on the day of Halley's Comet is on here often. But that's because it's so impressive. This was pretty impressive to me. I had gotten up early one morning and was sitting in our living room drinking coffee. About 5 minutes later my wife walks in. Half asleep and really groggy and goes. Did anyone get hurt in that car wreck? Naturally I'm like. WTF are you talking about dear? Literally at that moment. Bam. Huge wreck at the intersection outside our house. I freaked out and just kind of assumed that she was a witch from then on. I don't want to play 10 years and then die of a heart attack when I'm 40. Future NBA Hall of Famer Pete Maravich, age 25. He played 10 years in the NBA and died of a heart attack at 40. I read about one guy who made a bet in June 1959 that they'd have a man on the moon within 10 years. He was out by one month. Dang. That must suck. The pilot episode of the X-Files spin-off The Lone Gunman was about them discovering a terrorist government cover a plot to fly a plane into the World Trade Center, a year before it actually happened. Relevant. The WTC towers are missing from the New York skyline in the 1998 game Deus Ex. Digging deeper, the game says that they were destroyed in the 2000s by a terrorist attack. This is not peace. It is an armistice for 20 years. French Marshal Ferdinand Foch, on the Treaty of Versailles, peace treaty at the end of World War I. He thought that it was too easy on the Germans. Actually if it wasn't so hard on Germans, maybe there wouldn't be World War II. German nation was so demeaned and humiliated by Versailles that Hitler could play with nationalism very easily. David Moyes prediction that he'd get Everton above Manchester United in the Premier League. He simply didn't foresee that he'd be managing United at that point. D. Ouch. People will run for fun. Dr. Emmett Brown 1885. It's calling jogging. It might be a soft J. And apparently you just run for extended periods of time. My old high school history teacher was former college classmates with Bill Clinton. He said one of their old law professors once said Bill has the potential to make it to the very top. If only he'd learn to keep it in his pants. I predicted Michael Jackson's death one hour before it happened. Not kidding. Freaked out my co-workers. Source. Me. I think I'm too late to this but have you ever read Fahrenheit 451 that book predicts huge flat screen TVs, Bluetooth, realistic robots, and the general change in attitude of society. More importantly, the mechanical hound. The neutrino. In 1931, Wolfgang Pauli was bothered by some weird numbers from radioactive beta decay. It didn't add up. Something had to be causing the discrepancy and he postulated that a ghost particle with no electrical charge, of incredible energy, with nearly no mass, a particle that was so energetic and so unperturbed by charge that it could theoretically travel through a light year of solid steel without interacting with any other particles. Such a particle must exist, he theorized. The journal Nature rejected his paper, his hypothesis was ludicrous, and even if he was right, how would science ever prove such a ghostly particle actually existed? Inconceivable they cried. But guess what? 
b. Enterprising physicists understood Pauli's theory and conceived of a way to isolate their detectors and perceive neutrinos. In chambers far underground, in pools of cleaning solution, they detected that blip, then another, then another, and the characteristics of that blip, they were telltale signs of an electrically neutral, incredibly tiny, incredibly energetic particle that hardly interacted with matter, they had found neutrinos. What Pauli conceived of on a blackboard became a scientific fact. This discovery is up there with black holes in the hierarchy of I think, therefore stuff is world of theoretical physics. Hunter S. Thompson's fear and loathing in America article. We are going to punish somebody for this attack, but just who or what will be blown to smithereens for it is hard to say. Maybe Afghanistan, maybe Pakistan or Iraq, or possibly all three at once. Who knows? Not even the generals in what remains of the Pentagon or the New York papers calling for war seem to know who did it or where to look for them. This is going to be a very expensive war, and victory is not guaranteed. For anyone, and certainly not for anyone as baffled as George W. Bush. All he knows is that his father started the war a long time ago, and that he, the goofy child president, has been chosen by fate and the global oil industry to finish it now. He will declare a national security emergency and clamp down hard on everybody, no matter where they live or why. If the guilty won't hold up their hands and confess, he and the generals will ferret them out by force. Someday, in the distant future, our grandchildren's grandchildren will develop a new equivalent of our classrooms. They will spend many hours in front of boxes with fires glowing within. May they have the wisdom to know the difference between light and knowledge. Plato. Thought it was kind of creepy accurate the first time I heard it. The one with the power to vanquish the Dark Lord approaches. Born to those who have thrice defied him. Born as the seventh month dies. And the Dark Lord will mark him as his equal, but he will have power the Dark Lord knows not. Either must die at the hand of the other for neither can live while the other survives. The one with the power to vanquish the Dark Lord will be born as the seventh month dies. Mark him as his equal. Neville Longbottom in the case of mistaken Avada Kedavra. After the great light shines over Europe, in pontificate of Pope Pius XII, another great war will begin. Virgin Mary in Fatima. 1917. Still quite scares me. P.S. Pope Pius XII was elected in 1939 and there was a huge aurora over Europe in 1939. Not anything by Nostradamus. All of his predictions were vague and only make sense if you retroactively try to attribute meaning to them. Plus he made so many literally thousands. And so some of them would have had to end up being almost right. Him 1.50 of the Rigveda on the sun, says, O oh sun, you who traverse 2202 yojanas in half an amisa the usual meaning of yajana is about 9 miles as in the Arthasastra and Phonamisha, the measures of time are thus defined in the Puranas, 15 amisa equals 1 kastha, 30 kastha equals 1 kala, 30 kala equals 1 muherta, 30 muherta equals 1 day and night. An emisa is therefore equal to 16 stroke 75 seconds. It does come very close to the correct figure of 186,000 miles per second. Rigvedas were written approx 1,500 years ago. Edmund Halley, using his friend Isaac Newton's laws of gravity and motion and a tour de force of mathematical genius, determined by studying ancient texts of previous comet sightings that many of those comets were actually the same comet which returned periodically, and using his findings he accurately predicted the next sighting of what is now known as Halley's Comet, which shows up after every 75 years. That's not predicting, that's called calculating. The Britney Spears episode of South Park predicted that Miley Cyrus would be the next celebrity to go crazy. All that's left to complete this prediction is to perform the ritualistic human sacrifice. When Wayne Campbell declares she will be mine, oh yes she will be mine about the guitar Garth told him he could never afford. Peter Schiff's prediction of the 2008 economic disaster, still hoping he's wrong about the oncoming worldwide economic collapse. General Billy Mitchell predicted a Japanese surprise attack from the air on Pearl Harbor. He was silenced by the government. 
That guy who wrote 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea basically predicted submarines and various other technologies, over 100 years before their invention. Jules Verne. The Halley's Comet guy, he predicted where and when it would pass 70 years out using nothing but second-hand accounts in ancient texts describing the comet in the past. Source, Cosmos. I remember seeing a documentary where they presented a scenario about a huge hurricane that destroyed the Louisiana Gulf Coast and caused gas prices to soar. A few months later Katrina made it a reality. A huge hurricane hits the Louisiana coast about every 30 years, just science and its location. Nostradamus was scarily accurate in his predictions. Like this, for example, the sea will not be passed over safely by those of the sun. Those of Venus will hold all Africa, Saturn will no longer occupy their realm, and the Asiatic part will change. And, as we all know, that's exactly what happened. It took me way too long to realize you're joking. The person who submitted to Wikipedia that Chris Benoit had killed his family and then himself, 12 hours before it actually happened. Comma the computer will become the hub of a vast network of remote data stations and information banks feeding into the machine at a transmission rate of a billion or more bits of information a second. Laser channels will vastly increase both data capacity and the speeds with which it will be transmitted. Eventually, a global communications network handling voice, data and facsimile will instantly link man to machine, or machine to machine, by land, air, underwater, and space circuits. The computer will affect man's ways of thinking, his means of education, his relationship to his physical and social environment, and it will alter his ways of living. Before the end of the century, these forces will coalesce into what unquestionably will become the greatest adventure of the human mind. David Sarnoff, early president of RCA, 1964. I know it's a little late, but I find this quote by William Tecumseh Sherman to be a pretty good prediction of the American Civil War. Comma you people of the South don't know what you are doing. This country will be drenched in blood, and God only knows how it will end. It is all folly, madness, a crime against civilization. You people speak so lightly of war, you don't know what you're talking about. War is a terrible thing, you mistake, too, the people of the North. They are a peaceable people but an earnest people, and they will fight, too. They are not going to let this country be destroyed without a mighty effort to save it. Besides, where are your men and appliances of war to contend against them? The North can make a steam engine, locomotive, or railway car. Hardly a yard of cloth or pair of shoes can you make. You are rushing into war with one of the most powerful, ingeniously mechanical, and determined people on Earth right at your doors. You are bound to fail. Only in your spirit and determination are you prepared for war. In all else you are totally unprepared, with a bad cause to start with. At first you will make headway, but as your limited resources begin to fail, shut out from the markets of Europe as you will be, your cause will begin to wane. If your people will but stop and think, they must see in the end that you will surely fail. He pretty much predicted how the war turned out before it even began. One of the many reasons why I consider him the greatest Union general in the war. Muir's Law, the prediction, made in 1965, that, the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit will double approximately every two years. It's almost exactly right which is pretty dang impressive considering how vastly different technology was 50 years ago. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.